one of the best ways to determine the healthiest vegetables is not necessarily their polyphenol count, but how bitter they are. Interestingly enough, great number of the blue zones. One of the things that is interesting about their vegetable selection is what I call more bitter, more better. And the more bitter the greens are or the vegetables are, the better they are for you. Plants use bitterness to warn you not to eat them. And they contain compounds that were designed to make insects sick. Now, you're not an insect. And as I've written about before and in the upcoming book I write about again, the dose makes the poison. And as Nietzsche was famous to say, that which doesn't kill me makes me stronger. And so the bitterness in these vegetables is actually a sign that's probably something really good in here that you should be eating. And that's also why I say eat the rainbow to get a variety of different bitter compounds and different polyphenols. So with that in mind, uh, first on the list is cruciferous vegetables. You know all of these, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, cabbage, arugula, rapini. These are all great for you. Now, they're some of the best postbiotic producing foods. Postbiotics are the products of bacterial fermentation of the foods you eat. These are actually signaling molecules that communicate very effectively with your immune system, telling your immune system who to worry about, who not to worry about, and they're signaling systems to your mitochondria. They're also a great source of sulfur and sulfur-like compounds that actually improve mitochondrial health. They allow you to make a postbiotic called hydrogen sulfide, the so-called rotten egg smell. Hydrogen sulfide is incredibly important in the right amount for vascular health, for the lining of your blood vessels. Now, here's a cool trick in terms of their cancer-fighting ability. These vegetables should be chopped before you cook them to actually get the benefits of an enzyme called myrosinase. Now, interestingly, plants, these particular plants, produce myrosinase in their leaves when they hear or feel an insect chomping on them. And it's the chomping of the insect that actually activates this anti-insect compound. So fun fact, chop your broccoli, chop your cauliflower before you cook it. Better yet, buy your cauliflower chopped, buy your broccoli frozen, chopped. They've already done the work for you. Now, you can take some of these vegetables to extreme. And some of my patients, hearing that they ought to have these in their life, eat them literally every meal every day. Now, you need these vegetables, but you can overdo them. Cruciferous vegetables, when taken to the extreme, will suppress thyroid function. And I see it. Doesn't happen very often. But with a number of my patients who really dive in to cruciferous vegetables, because of their health benefits, I see a gradual increase in their thyroid-stimulating hormone. And when I ask them to tell me what they're eating, cruciferous vegetables come right to the top of the list. And when we back off on those cruciferous vegetables, lo and behold, their thyroid function comes right back to normal. Now, if you still want to eat lots of cruciferous vegetables, do me a favor. Get a TSH drawn by your doctor and go to it and then check your TSH three months later and see how we're doing. All right, number two, artichokes. I can't say enough good things about artichoke. Uh, I recently returned from uh, Italy in the south of France. I can tell you that just about every place we went has a sliced raw artichoke salad on the menu. Almost every place we went 
had sautéed or stewed artichokes on the menu. It's ubiquitous. Now, why is it there? Well, artichoke hearts particularly and young artichoke leaves are incredibly rich in fiber, particularly a fiber called inulin. Inulin is one of the best prebiotic fibers that you can eat, particularly when it's contained in things like artichokes. Inulin can be made into what are called plasmalogens by gut fermentation. Now, inulin is usually in the heart or the crown, and it's also in the stem. And particularly in Italy, the globe artichoke is raised because it has a very long stem. And the stem is peeled and is eaten because it's just full of fiber and inulin. We don't see the globe artichoke here very much, but don't worry about it. It's your artichoke heart. Years ago, we were at a restaurant in Chicago. The first course was an artichoke. And my wife, having lived in California most of her life, taught me early on how to eat an artichoke. And of course, you pull off the leaves and you scrape the leaf to get that little bit, bit of meat. But a number of the diners in Chicago who were not very familiar with artichoke were trying to eat the leaves. And it was a rather hilarious uh, episode when all these diners were had this mouthful of unedible leaves and didn't know what to do with them. So please, don't eat the leaves, scrape the leaf with your teeth. That's where the benefit is. However, baby artichokes, you can eat the whole thing. And I have some delicious recipes. I love them roasted with olive oil and garlic. You can saute them. You can even bread them with tapioca flour. And I have a recipe right here on my channel for this. Also, make a lectin-free artichoke dip. They're really easy that way. Now, most people don't want to do the trouble of steaming an artichoke. The good news is you can buy frozen artichoke hearts. You can buy them canned. You can buy them brined. But on the canned and brined ones, just check the label for sugar content. Some of them are sweetened. Number three, root vegetables. I can't tell you yet how important root vegetables are for your overall health. I've got a whole must-read chapter in the upcoming gut-brain paradox about how root vegetables are one of the best ways to get bacterial compounds into you that are incredibly beneficial to your overall health. And when I was a kid, we had a vegetable garden, as we did for my children, and we'd go out and pull a carrot out of the ground and, you know, brush it off and eat it. Wouldn't even occur to us to wash it. Well, what we didn't know was that we were actually eating the microbiome of that root vegetable. And that microbiome was actually incredibly beneficial to us. And so root vegetables have their own unique microbiome that has huge amounts of benefits to our immune health, and to our brain health. And so that's why I want you to get root vegetables into your life. Now, if you've read Gut Check, you know that living bacteria are great for you. But equally as important, dead bacteria, like if you cooked them, still carry the same information as the living bacteria. And that's what's so exciting that now dead bacteria are classified as postbiotics that are important. So don't be afraid of cooking root vegetables like radishes, onions, garlic, fennel bulbs, jicama. They're full of prebiotic fiber. In fact, I have, I have a jicama french fry recipe in my book. It's absolutely delicious. I personally like to use jicama sticks raw as a dip to use tomato-free guacamole and get it into my mouth. I even have an herb-roasted radish recipe, and it's amazing. So you don't, yeah, eat them raw. That's a great way to do it. But don't be afraid that 
you want to get fennel into your diet, but you don't particularly like the crunchiness of fennel, cook it. Fennel is very common, particularly in Tuscany and parts of France. And it's both fresh and salads, but it's also stewed and sauteed all the time. And very hearty meals are contain fennel. And again, it's a root vegetable. Now, just because it's a root vegetable doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you. Sadly, carrots and beets, when you cook them, you actually break down the cell walls and make that sugar available. They don't call them sugar beets for nothing. But raw is another thing. Raw carrot is great. And please don't fall into the trap. A baby carrot is not a baby carrot. A baby carrot is a whole carrot that's been whittled down to look like a baby. You're actually throwing away the good stuff. When you buy them at the farmer's market, don't wash the stuff off. Eat them as long as they're organic. Now, in Italy, one of my favorite appetizers is a sliced raw beet carpaccio with feta cheese and olive oil and some mint leaves. It's absolutely delicious. And you can make it at home. It's really easy. So buy your beets at the farmer's market. Take them home. Slice them thin. Pour some olive oil on it. If you've got some feta cheese, all the better. And enjoy. Now, finally, chicory. Once again, I have not had a salad in Italy or France that did not contain one or more chicory leaves. Radicchio, Treviso, the red Italian lettuces. They're not lettuces, they're chicory. Frisee, that frizzy stuff. Belgian endive. Uh, chicory. Uh, there's a lot of a very interesting chicory family called Puntarella that I can actually get in uh, Santa Barbara, but we see it all the time in Italy, both raw and cooked, and also in France. Why are these people eating all this chicory? Because chicory has some of the best sources of inulin that you can find, and inulin feeds friendly bacteria. The more you feed your friendly bacteria, the more they take care of you. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Shiitake mushrooms, easy to find now in most grocery stores. They're packed with a polysaccharide called beta-glucan, which is number one, great for gut health, but number two has been associated with reducing cholesterol levels in people who take beta-glucan. 